What's up guys, Brad here. So Disney recently announced that they'll be updating around a dozen or so Marvel films on their Disney Plus service to these new IMAX enhanced versions. And actually you should be able to check those out right now if you have the service as these IMAX enhanced versions went live on November 12th as part of Disney Plus Day. Now in this video, I wanna go over what you'll be getting with these new IMAX enhanced Marvel movies on Disney Plus and maybe what you should and should not expect from these updates versions. So let's just dive right in and talk about what you'll be getting with these new IMAX enhanced Marvel movies on the Disney Plus service. So according to a recent Ars Technica article posted on November 8th, this 17.1 by 9 format, which they keep calling it in the article, will land exclusively on 13 Marvel Studios films to start with, with the move coinciding with the streaming premiere of Shang-Chi and The Legend of the Ten Rings. Now you can scroll down and see the 13 Marvel films that will be on Disney Plus as IMAX enhanced titles, and below that we see that the article states that when a film switches to an IMAX digital ratio, the usual black bars that signify a wider screen 21 by 9 ratio will be reduced adding approximately 26% more image to your HDTV. Now, something I want to note here, this article keeps throwing around the term IMAX digital, but it actually goes by IMAX enhance when we're talking about home theater related IMAX stuff. IMAX digital is what you'll find in most AMC branded theaters or standalone theaters with the IMAX logo, and it has nothing to do with home theater stuff. Just wanted to point that out. So what will you actually be gaining or getting from these new versions? Well, basically the scenes that are IMAX enhanced will open up the top and bottom black bars, typically revealing more image information at the top and bottom of the frame while also filling more of the screen too. Now we can see this when looking at a scene from Black Widow side by side. The IMAX enhanced version on the left, which has an aspect ratio of 1.90 to one, does fill the screen more and does reveal more of the image at the top and bottom than the original theatrical widescreen version on the right, which has an aspect ratio of 2.35 to one, which is more typical of this kind of movie. And if you're someone who likes to watch movies on your phone or tablet, then you'll also gain some screen real estate there as well with zooming in likely filling much more of your screen than it did before. Now, thankfully, Disney did not pull a George Lucas and only offer these new IMAX enhanced versions on their service. Each movie now has two versions you can access by selecting the versions tab in the movies menu, allowing you to watch whichever version you prefer. Now this is fantastic news for anyone who has a 2.35 to one or 21 by nine scope projector screen and a projector with maybe an anamorphic lens, as you won't have to worry about any weird framing issues that might crop up due to the IMAX enhanced framing. <laughs> you see what I did there? crop up IMAX enhanced front, yeah, I'll go home. Now I have to give Disney credit here. This is a step in the right direction and I hope it's a trend that continues as they add more IMAX enhanced movies to their service. Having options is always a good thing. And I also hope that we maybe start seeing something similar trickle down to physical media as well, though most companies would probably want to nickel and dime us to death if they know they can offer us multiple versions to buy. Now, you may be familiar with other films that offer similar IMAX sequences or shots, such as those found on quite a few Christopher Nolan films like The Dark Knight, Interstellar, and Tenet. And just like those films, you'll find that most of the Marvel movies that are IMAX enhanced, with the exception of Avengers Infinity War and Endgame, which both of those were shot entirely with digital IMAX cameras, will switch between IMAX and widescreen shots, sometimes pretty often in certain situations. Basically, this means you'll go from black bars to small black bars, black bars to small black bars, black bars to small black bars, you, you get it. Now, as you can imagine, this can get pretty distracting and annoying depending on the size of your display and the distance you sit away from it. So it's definitely something you wanna keep in mind. Now, what I will say is that unlike those Christopher Nolan movies where it switches to scenes shot with IMAX cameras and suddenly you notice just how much better and more detailed everything looks, you're not gonna find that here with these Marvel movies, unfortunately. The IMAX sequences and shots in the Marvel films look pretty much identical to the ones on the standard theatrical widescreen versions. There's not extra detail or clarity when viewing those IMAX scenes, just an increase in the amount of space at the top and bottom of the frame. 
Now, this can be attributed to a number of things, but it likely comes down to the fact that we're looking at a highly compressed video streamed over the internet, and also that Christopher Nolan typically shoots his IMAX scenes on a massive IMAX film camera using 70 millimeter film, while the majority of IMAX sequences and shots in a Marvel film are more than likely shot with digital IMAX cameras that 6K resolution. Now, while it may be true that 70 millimeter film contains more raw data and resolution than a digital 6K IMAX camera can even capture, and that could also be a factor in why there's such a stark difference between IMAX shots on different movies by different directors, well, that topic is for another video entirely. Now, there's also the topic of the IMAX enhanced moniker being applied here as currently, the only thing this really does on Disney Plus is basically open up the top and bottom of the frame. Now, apparently IMAX enhanced DTS audio will be making its way to the Disney Plus service at some point, and it'll be interesting to see if there's any benefit to that over the Dolby Atmos tracks, which are currently offered on Disney Plus. And will Disney take the same approach with audio as it's done with the IMAX enhanced video, offering the option to stream either the Dolby Atmos track or the new IMAX enhanced DTS track? Well, that's just something we'll have to wait and see. Now, which one is the better version to watch? Well, ultimately that's gonna come down to personal preference and I think it's entirely subjective, so I can't really answer that for you. But which one do you think looks better? Which one are you excited to watch in your home theater? Let me know down in the comments section below. And hey, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and ring that bell icon so you never miss out when I upload a new video. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.